friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We're going to be looking at how we can deploy a Dart application on Heroku. I've got an example here with a simple shelf server that I've deployed. And what this server simply does is it takes in the path that we've entered after the base URL and then it outputs it in the response. So if I change this to world and I hit enter, then we get request for weld. All right, not going to waste your time any further. Let's get into it. First step with all of this is to, of course, ensure that you've got the Heroku command line interface installed. So if you visit this URL and you scroll down, they've got installation instructions for each platform. And because I'm on, I'm on Mac, I can use brew to install it. I can open up my terminal and then I can, I'll run that command and that should install Heroku for me. And once that is installed, we can now come to our editor. And once I'm in my editor, I am going to bootstrap a project using Stagehand. So what I want is a service shelf application. So I'll do Stagehand service shelf. And then I run pubget to update my dependencies. Once that's done, I'm going to run and it's server.dart. Okay, so I've got my server running at locals 8080. Let's check this out. Okay, and there we go, our server running. If I add slash hello, then we got that in the response. Okay, all right, so next I am going to come to my Heroku dashboard and I'm going to create a new app. I'll just call it Dart Server, Server Shelf and I'll just click create app. Okay, so once I've created it, it will bring me to the deploy section and it gives me instructions on how to deploy our app. So let's go back to our editor. Then let's add this app to version control. So I'll, I'll initialize a git repository. I'll do a git add and then I'll commit. Okay, so first we need to log in by doing Heroku login. And then here it says, press any key to open up the browser. So, oh, I quit. I'll press any key and then it brings me to the browser, asking me to log in. And then once I'm logged in, then I can close this page and then return to the CLI. So now I'm logged in. So after I've logged in, I need to run this command to add Heroku's repository as an origin on this project. So, we want to do Heroku git colon remote hyphen a and then the name of our app which we called dart server shelf okay and if we need to deploy this we can run a test deployment by doing git push Heroku master of course I wasn't expecting this to pass because we need to configure what's known as a build pack in order to run our project what build packs are essentially is they set the relevant environment for us to run our app. So because it's a Dart application, we need to get Dart set up in the environment we're going to be running our shelf server. We've got instructions here on how to set a build pack. And over here on GitHub, we've got a build pack. This build pack will install the Dart runtime for us and then allow us to run our app. I'll copy this repository URL and then in the editor we want to run Heroku build packs colon set and then we'll paste in the GitHub URL. Okay, so now that that is set, we can push our git repo again by doing git push Heroku master. We can see that it's picked up our build pack, but then we need to specify some environment variables, in particular the Dart SDK URL to start us off. So I'll copy this and then I believe we can do that in the terminal, but let's do that in the UI. I'll come over to our dashboard area and we'll come to settings. And here I click on reveal config vars and I'll set one up for our Dart SDK URL. So in order to get this SDK URL, we need to go to the Dart website and in the Dart website we'll click on get Dart and then you want to get the SDK zip file download so over here we want the stable channel we want the Linux option and then we want the link for the Debian package so I'll right click and copy the link address I'll come back to the dashboard and then I'll paste that in here 
I'll click add and that's now added we can come back to our editor and there's one more thing i need to do actually so if i click on server.dart and we look at our server side logic for our host name as instructed here we need to set our host name to to not local host to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 else it won't work so i'll set it to that and then i'll save that and then i'll commit that change and then let's push okay so it's installing the dart sdk so it's pushed onto heroku now and it's installing the dart sdk and also the build pack runs pubget for us so it will update our package dependencies and let's wait for it to finish and once it's finished it gives us a url here at the bottom so let's open this in the browser okay so we've got an application error so it doesn't seem like it's launching so let's check our logs okay the build succeeded but then we got this error message no web processes running which is because we need to define what's known as a proc file instructing heroku on the instruction we want it to run we need to define a web process and what a web process essentially does is it allows our app to receive incoming http traffic essentially so it makes our website accessible by the public in here the command we want to run is from the dart sdk folder and then the bin directory and then the dart command and then our server file so it's bin slash server dot dart so i'll save that and let's commit this file and let's push again and once that's deployed we can check again in the browser and there we have our deployed website so if i put slash hello then it gives us hello and that's it pretty much next thing i want us to look at is to learn how to deploy a static server because this example is pretty much an api server so let's see how we can deploy a static server and to help me do that i'm going to install a package called shelf static i'll place that under my dependencies and then i can run pubget to update that because i'm using vs code it's already done that for me i'll come over here to my server side and then i can import that package and once we've imported that the handler will be this piece of logic so i'll comment this out for now and this just calls the top level function create static handler from here and we want to point to a build directory and then the default document will be our index.html so let me save this and let's create our directory so we'll not create a build directory instead we'll create a web folder and under web we'll have our index.html and let's just create a simple html5 document we'll have a script tag the source will be main.dart.js and i'll just add a heading one and we'll say hello heroku and let's create our main.dart file in here so in here i'll just create a main function and then i'll just print out hello console so let me commit all of that and the reason why i am creating a web folder and not a build folder as specified here is because in the build pack the build command is run which takes in what's in the web folder and then it builds it essentially into a build folder so let's deploy this now okay so the build failed because the build command that has been configured for that build pack is i believe still based on dart version 1 so here it says dart 2 has a new build system learn how to migrate from pack build and remote blah 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 which is not a problem because this dart build pack allows us to specify a custom build command and this custom build command is set as an environment variable like how i was able to set the dart sdk url in the heroku dashboard i can go over there and set that build command but i can also set it here as such so we can say heroku config set we will say dart build command and the build command we want to run is that so just to explain a bit what's happening this is how we can access the pub command and then what we're doing is pub global activate web dev so we're installing the web dev tool 
which is what is used for development on the web. And once we've installed that globally, we're doing pub global run web dev build. So we're running the build command of the web dev tool, which will take the contents of our web folder and it will generate the build directory from there. So that'll be the distribution of our static file app. So let's run this. Okay, so now that we've set that, we can come to our dashboard. And if I reload and I reveal, you can see that we've got our build command added. So you can either do it through the dashboard or via the terminal. And this is added automatically by Heroku. Once that's done, we can do a git push Heroku master again. Okay, it looks like we need to add a couple more dependencies in our pubspec.yaml file. So let's do that now. So we can add build runner and then we can add build web compilers and then let's commit and push. Okay, so our build is succeeding. You can see that it's compiled our main.dart file into the expected JavaScript and we see that it's actually created our build directory okay so it says it's deployed so let's take a look all right so here's the app and when i look at the console we also see hello console logged out as we specified in the main dart file lastly what i can do here is if i come to the server.dart file we can do some refactorings like let's say i'll create a port env variable i can copy this in here and then I can check if the port env variable is null, then we can use localhost or else we can use that. And then I'll set this to var. Okay, and then we can pass our port env over here, search. So doing this now allows us to run our shell server locally as well as on Heroku, which is assuming that if this port environment variable is set, then we've got it deployed on Heroku servers or else we're running it locally. Heroku fortunately sets this port environment variable already behind the scenes, so we don't need to do that manually. We just need to extract that into our Dart application. All right, so lastly, let's try and run this locally. Oops, I need to build it first. So if I do web dev build, Okay, so once that's built, we've got build folder, and now we can do dart bin server.dart, and that should do. Okay, so we can access this under localhost. Let me commit this one more time, and then push again. Okay, so we successfully deployed, and there we go, it's still up.